All right, well, it's great to look through a telescope. And if you've ever done it, usually you've probably done it with somebody and you know, either you or them are getting it into focus and you're looking and you can say, hey, I see this. And then you stick your head over there and you're like, oh, oh wait, I don't see it. Or it takes you a minute to see it, right? And that's kind of a bummer of a telescope. So you can only see it when you're looking through, through it. Now, they did have older technology that would use photographic plates and take the picture. So I could say, hey, I see this, take a picture of it, and then show it to you. However, it was only collecting 5% of the light that was coming through the telescope. This was kind of a big problem because the only way we can find out things about the universe is kind of through telescopes. And if we're taking a picture to show others, we're only capturing 5% of what's coming through the telescope. Not very good. Well, computers got better, and so now we move to charge couple devices, CCDs. Basically, these work in pixels. Okay. And they are more efficient, a lot more efficient, still not perfect. Right? You're looking at 75% of the light. However, it can have a better resolution. It resolves much fainter objects and faster processing times. We can actually use computer software to compensate for any errors that we're getting that we know were caused by the telescope or the software programs or whatnot. And this is constantly improving. All right, so how do the CCD things work? I'm a little bit confused, but basically you've got millions of pixels on a grid. Light hits the pixel, it builds up an electric charge. Right? We've talked about the EM field and how that works. And so this charge can be recorded electronically. Now, you, once you have the picture recorded, of course it's the computer age, right? So we can store it, we can process it, we can use software to remove all the defects and you end up getting what used to be picture A, and now you can see picture D comes into vision. So the first picture, you know, I'd probably say, oh, look, there's a sun there and something going off to the side. Yeah. And then by picture D, you're going, oh, that's looks like a star cluster with lots of stars. So... The better we get at technology, the better the images will become. For telescopes, the bigger the better. The bigger they are, the more they can collect. Okay. The more they can collect, the better resolving power they have. How much detail are you able to see? So the bigger the better. So if you're bigger, you can gather more light. Gathering more light means that you can see objects that are far away. You can see objects that would normally be too faint. And you could possibly see more of the EM spectrum. How do you gather more light? Well, longer exposure time, right? So staring at it for longer will get you more light. Or a larger bucket, right? bigger telescope. Bigger telescope will get you more light. Okay, so longer exposure time. Right? Once you have a telescope, how much exposure you have to it will determine how much light you get. Now, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can either stare at a certain area for a long time, or you could look at the area and then come back a little bit later and look at the same area and then come back a little bit later and look at the same area and kind of piece that together. All right, that makes sense. But the problem is having access to the telescopes, right? How do you get access to a telescope? It's kind of the same problem as how do you get access to a supercomputer, which I was actually able to use back in my days at grad school. And basically what you had to do is you had to submit your project to the people that own the supercomputer and wait for them to approve it for you and then they would allow you a certain amount of time but 
you had to wait in line in order to get that time, so you had to submit your project, your code or what whatnot to the person that now runs the computer, and you had a wait list. Now, if you knew the person that controlled the computer, maybe they'd put you in the front of the line. Usually that never happens, but you know, it's never a bad idea to try. They can only just say no. So that's kind of the same way it works for a telescope. You have to put in your proposal, what you want to look at, how much time you need. It'll be reviewed and approved or denied or modified by the committee. And then it'll get passed on or you pass it on to the person who actually controls the telescope. And they will help set it up in your waitlist. Well, I've got a link here, uh, the Big Bang Theory, and Sheldon needs to use a supercomputer, so he's in this process of figuring out how he's going to use the supercomputer. So, if you have a minute, it's just a cute little clip on waiting. <laughs> okay, it's true, Kripke lacks the basic social skills that we take for granted. But he also controls the new open science grid computer that I need to use to run some simulations of structure formation in the early universe. Well, good luck getting time on it. The only people he lets use it are his friends. Well, then, the solution is simple. I shall befriend him. <laughs> Kripke! Yeah? What would you say to the idea of you and I becoming friends? I would say I have no interest in becoming your friend. <laughs> Oh, that seems rather short-sighted, coming from someone who is generally considered altogether unlikable. <laughs> Why don't you take some time to reconsider? <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> well, I think we're off to a terrific start. Okay, so as I said, the bigger the better. Larger telescopes mean larger mirrors, mean more light. Now, how big... And does it really make a difference? Yes. Okay. Your brightness is actually related to the size of the mirror. So a five meter mirror collects the same amount of light in two and a half, well not even, approximately two and a half minutes as a one meter mirror in one hour. So basically if you have a one meter mirror and you stare at something for a whole hour collecting the data, you could have got that same data if you had a five meter mirror in two and a half minutes. So it really does make a huge difference. The mirror in Hawaii, the ones you've already seen a picture of, 36 mirrors together make a 10 meter mirror. The one in Chile, 16.4 meters. So big mirrors. Also, look at the pictures. Where are they located? Looks like they're all located on a mountain. Hmm. Bigger telescopes give you bigger, <laughs> better, angular resolving power. What does this mean? Well, resolution. Basically, resolution you think of, oh, you think better detail, right? You get your new phone, it's got a camera on it, what's the resolution of your camera, right? You're thinking, how much detail can I see? Or is this going to be good so I can put it on Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram? Or is this going to be printable where I can actually get it blown up into a picture for the wall or something? But resolution is actually being able to make separate objects of things that are close together. Okay, and so if you see A, B, C, D, those pictures over there, right? You got two things, they're kind of fuzzy. By the time you get down to D, you can see clearly what's going on. Now, angular, things in the sky are close together. Or at least they look close together to us. They're just separated by a small angle. And why is that? Because it's far away. So even though both items are very far away from us, 
the angle that we can see them is very small. The angle in between them is very small. So a bigger telescope will get you a better angular resolving power.